Hello there, we're back at What The Flick. I'm Christy, that's still Alonzo, that's still Ben. So we're mixing it up a little bit, some movie news, some trailers, and now a review of a new documentary is out from Japan called Ramen Heads. It's about ramen, it will make you hungry. What's it about, Alonzo? Very much so. Uh, yeah, opening in New York and LA this weekend. Uh, it is a look at not only the history of ramen and why it's so great, but it's key practitioners in Japan and the people who are obsessed with it. Uh, we mainly focus on Osamu Tomita, who at the beginning of the movie is being awarded uh, best ramen in Japan for the third year in a row, even though he lives in a fairly small town that's off the beaten path. It's not you know in the heart of Tokyo, but uh, he makes a ramen that uh, People line up for at the you know starting at dawn, and we find out his where his obsession comes from and how he makes it and what's different about how he does it, and then we get a look at the other kinds of ramen around the country and how they make it. And uh, you will be famished by the time this thing's over. Take a look. じゃないと、バカを魅了できないと思ってるんですよ。ラーメンほど熱狂的な信者のいる食べ物はないと思ってるんで。ここじゃなきゃダメなんですけど。I was just getting started. This is a movie <laughs> this is a movie about art. Yeah. Yeah, they but, say there's a line in there that from one of the other restaurant owners that he's not I, I'm not he's not I'm not I don't run a restaurant just like essentially I I'm I'm an, I'm an art I'm an artist. Right. Yeah. But then they talk to another guy who like runs a you know a, a very a, a bustling stand in the middle of a market. He's like I don't know what ramen means. It's how we make a living. Like <laughs> right. you know, he doesn't want to get into this sort of foofy, you know, uh, stuff about it. And they ask him can he can he estimate how many bowls of ramen he serves a day and that guy's like I don't know like 800 a <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's bananas. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it's just this, you know, uh, uh, Tomita totally lets him into his process. It's funny because I remember, you know, I love the the movie Tampopo, mm -hmm. which is about, you know, the, the it's funny, Tampopo is almost less funny now because like people really are this obsessed with ramen. Like yes. they treat that like a joke in the movie, but no, it's a real thing. Um, but you know, in that one, all the all the ramen chefs are very secretive about their stuff. And you know, the the the, the main characters of the film have to literally like check the garbage in the alley to find out what recipe, what ingredients they're using. And he's like, no, come on, I'll show you everything. He goes, when the people show, tell you that they're not gonna show you how they do it, it's because they don't have anything interesting. So He shows you how you do it, but then the, the interns or the apprentices that he has, yeah. he won't teach them. Right. He's like, you can come and hang out and like scrub the floor in my kitchen. Right, but, but that's but that's how hang out and but see that's me. how he learned yes, when he was yes, an apprentice too. Yes. Like he just sort of took a lot of notes about, you know, what got boiled for how right. long and da, da, da. he stole the intel. He exactly. Was fine. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's just how the that's how it goes. But Yes, yeah, so he makes this broth that involves like pig heads and sardines yeah, and different uh, kinds of sardines. Different, yeah, three different <laughs> kinds of sardines and like the whole like onions and garlic and ginger and all this stuff. And it, it's drool worthy. This yeah. movie, the the the. You know, as you, if you if you if you're on Instagram, you know you, you you can photograph food in a really unappealing way if you don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And this movie, it the 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 glamour shots of food are yeah. so you, like commercial ready. Mm -hmm. You and Dave, you guys you guys are foodies, right? Sort of. Yeah. We're fat, we're fat guys who like to eat. A foodie <laughs> might be putting too far. I got to be your No, you're that. not just fat guys who like to eat. I mean, you are, but you you are, but, but I mean, you 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 care about food. You talk about food. Sure, you guys yeah. are interested in food. We we, yeah, we, we yeah. have a food podcast, but we always yeah. describe it as a food podcast hosted by two film critics. Like we 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 know our our lane, you know. But yeah, but we're into it, and 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 this is, it's interesting to see like the difference between like a a miso ramen versus a shoyu or a tokatsu or you know. Uh, the, you know, the, there's one place where they they just all they do is red snapper. They boil like red yeah. snapper bones and skin and makes this clear broth. And it's and and the narrator will say things like you know it's very dramatic. Yeah, it's yeah. like you know a nostalgia for a childhood that was not yours. Yeah, no, that was <laughs> a, a touch of sadness from the country. Well, that's yeah. the interesting <laughs> juxtaposition here was that this guy who is he's so methodical and he's so precise and he walks the same route every day and gets there at the same time every day and does the exact same thing 
every day to create this food that is meant to be soft, slurped. soft, <laughs> slurped, but also like warm and nourishing and comforting. Yes. And it's something about his ritual that is comforting and what results is amazing. And yeah, people, there's one guy who left his house at like 4.30 in the morning to get on a bus, to get there at 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> to get a reservation. And, uh, and it's fascinating. And then also when you see him, when you see Tomita away from the restaurant, <laughs> And you see what he's really like. Like, he's really flashy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for a guy who has this very unassuming 10 seat, 11 seat yeah, ramen right stand, yeah. he's got like, this is from Hermes, this is from Chanel. <laughs> well, and, you know, well you, you, it's, you, you see a flashback That's of him, like a picture of him from before he became a ramen chef. And it's very that sort of like Harajuku, he was kind of rocking that Elvis rockabilly look, you know? Mm. And so, yeah, on his off hours, it's, it, is, it, is, it is on with you, the, you the get, Louis Vuitton You get that ramen money, you gotta show it, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, because at is, work it's the very it's the strict <laughs> blue uniform. But you know. one of the things he says though is that you know you can make an amazing meal for five hundred dollars and that's an amazing five hundred dollar meal, but this is an eight dollar meal. Yeah. That, so how much money is he actually making? Well, I don't know. But, I mean, think of the turnover. You know, they're like they're, 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 those yeah. ten yeah, seats yeah, are yeah, always yeah, full yeah, from right. like it's constant, from yeah. eleven a.m. to you know. So how did you? Get, what, was, what was the guy getting in? Like you have to pay ahead of time just to. They, they have a machine tickets. where you buy a meal ticket and like you based on what is your order ahead of. Ahead yeah, of time, and, and then so you, they know what like you want when you come like in. Said, right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, you know, what I just thought was really interesting about. You know the the whole thing is how ramen itself, they, and they they keep saying in the movie is is like it's like a working man's meal. Mm -hmm. Like you know it, it, it's designed to be filling, so you can go back to work and quick and quick. <laughs> yeah, so it's not this sort of foofy thing. We're not watching a documentary about people making pate or whatever or sushi or like yeah, well, dreams of sushi. Yeah, right. for that matter. I mean, sushi I think might be in Japan maybe is a little more mainstream than it is Best here. Fancy. But but there is something about it. this is sort of like watching a doc about mac and cheese. You know, like <laughs> it's <laughs> it's comforting. It's solid. Solid. It is. You can fancy it up if you feel like it, mm -hmm. but at its core, it is just like you know a, a, a sort of you know. It, there's you know it's it's not foofy. And yet one of the guys he has these two other you know colleagues of his yeah. who are his buddies who are as as esteemed as he is, and one of them has a Michelin star right. for his ramen. <laughs> that sort of seems like a contradiction in terms, you know. Well, you know, I mean, a anything can be made. You know, like when they started putting truffles and lobster and macaroni and cheese, obviously mm. we turned a corner. <laughs> so anything can be made fancier than it is. But I think at its heart, it's always going to be yes. the same. But there are a lot of. I think, yeah, ahead, sorry. I was going to say that this like fascination with trying to make it more and more interesting. And more and more elaborate, like precedes the foodie revolution. I, I would suspect. A, you yeah. know, I, it, 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 it's been it's interesting. I mean, I think there's a whole history of how we eat that is fascinating, and it's different from in, from country to country. Like this movie gives you kind of a quick history of how you know uh, this sort of Chinese noodle soup became you know a Japanese mm -hmm. version of it, and and how it sort of progressed over the years. But I think in the U.S., there's been a, a, an ongoing thing where. You know, you look at like recipes of the 1950s mm -hmm. that are not like the most wildly flavored things in the world, yes. you know. And, and you know, our palates have gotten more daring from Julia Child onward. Yes, mm -hmm. well, this will make you hungry. So um, I would give this like a, like an 8.7. Okay, I'll what would you? I would nine. Yeah. All right, so that's a 8.9 for us. Anyway, so I think it's just New York and LA, but go see Ramen Heads when it comes near you. It's, it's coming in May, everywhere. There and you go. go see it everywhere. Eat afterwards. Please, bye. <laughs>